Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I am your host, Scott Ramp, and I got a really short show for you guys today. I got No City Council. I got uh, summer series videos courtesy of the Boys and Girls Club of Missoula County, and I got a bunch of news and new programs that are airing this weekend as well. So let's kick things off with the weather. It is currently 54 degrees outside. Today it's going to be a high of 72. The low is going to be 37. High is going to be 73 by Saturday. So if you guys are planning on going to all those uh, football games tonight and tomorrow night, you're going to see some good temperatures with a uh, low into the 44s by Saturday night. So it's going to be a fairly warm night, but it's still going to be 44. So you might want to just a little bit warmer. Maybe that wear that grizz sweater or whatnot if you guys are planning on going uh, out and about tonight as well. All right. Let's talk about some news items. Um, if uh, uh, In short, it seems like the everything... Um, south of the river or east of the river what i can't determine it because the river kind of swoops around anyways on the other side of the river um on the other side of downtown uptown missoula i guess um there's they're dealing with some um blackouts um the power company is trying to figure out what the source is so they'll hopefully be able to get it up and ready by the end of the day but if you're on that side of town um you won't be able to see this because you don't have power but you know just so you guys who are listening, you're my favorites, not the people who have blackouts. All right, so let's talk about um, just some other news items that are happening. Of course, school has started this week, and if you're under the age of 18, you should probably in, be in school unless you're being homeschooled. Um, um, school, uh, school kicked off this week with many classes on Wednesday for Missoula area um, freshmen and earlier. Um, most of the high school students from sophomore to uh, seniors started school on Thursdays. MCPSMT.org is your source for everything Missoula County Public Schools related because some of you may be curious on which school is going through construction. And speaking of construction, Russell Elementary, was was finished just in time for the first day, but many MCPS schools remain under construction. Hellgate High School, Lewis and Clark, Meadow Hill, Willard, Washington, Sentinel High School are in some of the still works in progress, but of course many of these constructions are still going on here. Uh, Cold Springs, will uh, still be hosting the school at their old school while they build the Jeanette, while they start finishing up the Jeanette Rankin School, which is still in construction and is slated to be opened by uh, f late fall, early winter time. So the schools say that they are right on track for the projects uh, with their deadline that they've imposed by 2020. So it's part of their whole 2020 initiative. And there's a whole bunch of 2020 initiatives in Missoula if, if you, uh, and just in general, there's just a lot of places around the country that are using 2020 as the catalyst for construction and change. All right, so in the state, in Montana news, Donald Trump's coming back to uh, Montana. This time he's going to Billings. Um, they had to turn people away in Great Falls last time he visited to promote Rosendale and to bash Tester. Um, so tickets to the event are free. So it's, you have to RSVP by going to Donald jtrump.com. People are encouraged to arrive early to get a seat in the uh, uh, the, the, the Metro Dome in Billings. Uh, among the states that Trump will be visiting, North Dakota, Missouri, Indiana, and West Virginia are deeply red states. He won um, easily in 2016 while uh, he's taking a chance to make him even redder by trying to eliminate uh, the Democratic senators in those states as well. It does not include in immediate plans to go to Florida, Michigan, Nevada, and Ohio, but that, of course, can be added to the uh, docket later on. The P... Uh, Okay, so anyways, Rosendale and outside conservative groups have tried to paint Tester um, in a negative light, of course, because it's election time. You know, you, it's to be expected. Uh, who was first elected to the U.S. Senate back in 2006, Tester, I'm talking about, as an extreme liberal who is out of touch with Montanans. With Montanans. Um, meanwhile, Tester this week was uh, toting the 19th bill he's brought and sponsored that he says that uh, was signed by Trump. So... Of course, um, you'll hear mostly about this until the upcoming election, so I'll stop right here and now because you're just going to hear a bunch of uh, um, elections, or if you're watching YouTube, they've been running a whole bunch of ads, uh, I mean, against Tester. There's a lot of money being put into uh, the campaign against Tester. Um, in national news, a jury in Texas uh, sentenced former police officer Roy Oliver to 15 years in prison for the murder uh, of last year of an unnamed black teenager. John Edwards, 15, uh, in the front, who was sitting in the front passenger seat, was shot in the head and killed when the car moved in reverse manner. Police say that the car was moving in a threatening manner, but police body cams show that the police officer, officer's life was never in danger. Oliver was convicted of murder Tuesday after Dallas County jurors debated for more than 12 hours over 
the past two days. The Dallas Morning News say that the same jury took five hours on Wednesday to decide on the sentence, which includes a $10,000 fine. Oliver would be eligible for parole in seven and a half years. Uh, his lawyers told Associated Press. According to the Associated Press, Edward's father has also filed a civil lawsuit in connection with the shooting. The jury uh, decision is not a, um, about John Edwards, but all other black men and women who have been killed and not received justice, says Washington, the attorney for the teen's father. So Roy Oliver's attorney say that they will appeal to a higher court to um, further this case hearing. So that's kind of what's happening in the news in and around. I do want to have a snippet of some of the local news that just kind of happened. And this is uh, kind of like an ongoing thing between two different fans of the uh, Grizz Nation. Um, of course, you must have heard about this a while ago. But of course, this is between um, um, Lisa Davey and let's see. Let's see. Hold on a second. I'll get it. Mike Sklarsi. Sklosser? Sklosser? Um, so basically, Mike Sklosser and uh, Lisa Davey came into, uh, um, started butting heads when uh, Lisa Davey decided to make a petition to uh, basically prevent the hiring of Bobby Halk back in 2017. And as a result, uh, Mike Sklari uh, uh, basically created a doxing program, which uh, basically released the address of Lisa Davies' boyfriend um, and try to interrogate uh, and not really interrogate, but the, they used choice words and memes and all sorts of things against her, which resulted in Davey uh, doing a, um, a restraining order on um, Sklar. Uh, Skla Sklazer, sorry about that. I'm just like butchering that last name. But uh, so Sklazer uh, has appealed to the court to say that this is unlawful and it affects his First Amendment rights. So that's kind of what's uh, that's kind of a news brief for you guys in terms of that. But I do have a bunch of other things I'm going to talk about in the show. We have a, a, a small amount of programs that are going to be airing a, along this weekend. A lot of repeats from what I already showed you this week. So here's a little taste of what you guys can see uh, this weekend. But when I come back, I'm going to talk about some of the movies that are coming out this week in Pre-Critic. <laughs> these for brood chambers but um this is usually used for the honey because it's easier it's easier to get off because it's not as big okay for the uninitiated the, the brood chamber is actually where the young bees are raised the eggs are laid and, and they're raised and a lot of times you will have two deep bodies before you ever get to what's known as the super and the lower one being the brood chamber where where the, the nursery however you want to refer to it uh, and then the second one is where they store the honey, which is what they eat. Mm -hmm. and Hey guys, welcome back. I got a lot of um, movies that are, there's a couple of movies coming out this weekend. Uh, there's a lot of limited release movies that are coming out, but here are some of the movies that you guys can see that are kicking off your Labor Day weekend. And it starts off with 
Nazi hunters. So basically, remember when the 65th Nazi war criminal was sent back just a couple weeks ago? Well, this one's about the guy who uh, orchestrated the Holocaust, and it's about Adolf Eichmann, uh, the man behind the plan uh, of the Holocaust who escaped prosecution. So a young group of elite agents track him down, and through a mix of flashbacks and action, uh, and action sequences, I assume you get to see uh, get to be on the edge of your seat. Um, anyways, expect the agents to fight with their own demons not to kill the guy and to bring him to justice. So it's kind of like one of those things. It's like this is a guy who orchestrated the murder of seven six million of their countrymen. So it's like one of those things that it's it's going to be it, it's very interesting because it's based on a true story, which basically means it's going to be one of those basic Hollywood films that are based on true stories. You know, like you can always assume that they're going to try to build more tension when that, I don't know. It's 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 kind of hard to really uh, talk about in one way or another, but um, all I can tell you is what you can expect from the movie. The movie starts out with um, the tragedy, and, they, and then they find the guy, and then they got to prove he's the guy. They interrogate the guy, and then they figure out how they're going to prosecute this guy. So... It's 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 one of those movies, and they have Academy Award winning winner Ben Kingsley as the part of Adolf Eichmann. So, anyways, let's move on. This next movie is coming out. It's one of those uh, crazy indie hits uh, that seem to be kind of catching some ground. If you liked, um, I think it's Attack the Block. This kind of seems like it kind of has the same kind of tonality of it, where a young kid who's uh, an adopted uh, kid of a family. Uh, whose father dies, and his brother just gets out of jail, so the brother has to kind of take up the mantle of being the kind of father figure, strong male, male role model. But in the end, the boy kind of proves himself to be a coming of age. But of course, you got to understand that uh, this movie also has um, alien technology in it. So you can already assume it's like that movie AXL last week about a robot dog. So it's not only about... Um, <laughs> um, the government trying to take it or aliens. It's always like the, the owner of the equipment wants it back. The uh, government, mobsters, whoever th can take a profit from a magic um, super high-tech gun. And basically that's kind of like the whole point of the movie and it's uh, the battle and all this stuff. So the movie's called Ken. And also the movie that's happening before it is Operation Finale. So, whew. Okay, so I think that's kind of it for a couple of movies that are coming out. There's there's a bunch of other movies that are having limited release, but these are some of the movies that are coming out in a wide release this weekend for Labor Day. So I kind of uh, told you what these movies are basically about. Y do you really need to see these movies? Because there's not going to be much of a twist or turn because Operation Finale is going to be like, okay, they catch the guy. It's about ca The movie's about catching the guy and proving that he did orchestrate the Holocaust. You, you already got your movie. All right, so anyways, Ken... This is a movie basically about, you know, two brothers, two brothers hanging out with a super weapon, trying to get away from the government. And I'm assuming since the uh, older brother is like out of jail, he probably has some gang affiliation that want his brother's super gun. I'm just, I'm just literally just a spitball in here. I have no idea what any of these movies are about, but that's, that's, my, that's what I assume. But the one thing I do know what it's about is this movie that you're about to see. It's called Clown Town. It is one of the many movies that the Boys and Girls Club made here while they visited um, Missoula Community uh, Media Resource um, these last couple weeks in August. So without further ado, here's Clown Town. It's a nice little horror film. And then when I come back, I'm going to talk about events. Harry Potter! Yeah, I love those kind of videos. Oh my gosh, so I got this new cell phone. It's called the iPhone X, and like, Hi. it's so awesome. Mom put a rice cake in an iPhone 5X box, and I thought I was getting an, an iPhone X, but really, it was just a rice cake. Worst thing ever. Oh my ever. gosh, that is the worst thing ever. It's like. But you think it's so disgusting. I like, know. What's the point? I Anyways. Know. So, um, have you seen the movie that's out? No. Did you hear that? The doorbell ready. What? Ooh, I'll go check. <laughs> Stupid ding dong ditch. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> 
What are you guys doing? doing? Nothing. Uh, nothing. We, we just came back from a long walk around the it, it was a ding dong get a ditch. You guys can go back to playing with Legos. Okay. Yeah. Here, we should put it on the right. Yeah. Thank you, Grace. Alright, here. Here. His nose is broken. And Mm -hmm. There, now he looks. Hey, boys. Huh? You know, sometimes there's things when you look behind them, like really scary things. When you turn around, something really scary is behind you. Yeah, a lot of the times. It happened to us. Okay. Huh. What? Um, never mind. Never mind. Cut. All right. All right, here. Here. His nose is broken. And there. Now he looks. Hey, boys. Huh? You know, sometimes there's things when you look behind them, like really scary things. When you turn around. Something really scary is behind you. Yeah. Uh, what are you talking about? about? Um, never mind. Where do you think it could have gone? Mm -hmm. Let's go look for it. You guys coming? Uh, you guys do that. Um, we're going to get back to some major Legos. Major Legos. Emily, I found a hole. I'm gonna see if I can reach the ground. Might not be the best idea. My arm's caught. Oh, Anderson, my arm's caught. Ow, 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 ow! Ow, Anderson, home! <laughs> ow, it hurts. Looks like I'm going to have to re-edit that movie. <laughs> All right, let's move on to uh, some events that are happening in the city of Missoula. Hey, guys, volleyball is starting at the University of Montana. Um, Grizz Volleyball kicks off. I don't know if it's already kicked off, but um, to me, it's kicking off. So it starts 
pretty much around 10 a.m. So if you guys are just hearing this, this is a good time to go over there. But I don't know if they're actually have the game because they have those blackouts that are happening at the arena. So they usually play uh, volleyball at the um, Dahlberg Arena. So starting at 10 a.m. if they get the power back in time. All right, Tiny Tales and Story Time is happening at the Missoula Public Library starting at 10.30 a.m. Um, so those are a good place for kids who are uh, birth to about walking who are just before they go to school. It's a good way for kids to get engaged in reading. Uh, Spectrum Discovery Center, hey, if you want your kids uh, to do science instead of reading, starting at 11 a.m. and pretty much going on most of the afternoon is a Spectrum Discovery Center where they're learning about a brain dissection. Uh, they came here uh, a couple weeks ago during our zombie camp and they talked about brains and they actually brought uh, um, goat brains with them, which is pretty cool. And just so you guys know, a common misconception is that brains aren't actually pink, they are gray. All right, anyways, Cribbage Bridge, <laughs> starting at 12.30, uh, around noonish lunchtime. If you, hey, if you want to play some cards and say, play some bridge, best place to do it is Missoula Senior Center, best dance floor in Missoula. That's what they claim, and I like to say that, too, because it's funny. Labor Day weekend at Lolo Hot Springs, they have deals. If you guys are planning on going camping or going to a cabin, they have uh, deals up there. Uh, you can have an RV site for $32 per night, or you can have cabins starting at $58 per night as well. Ten camping is seven. Uh, 12 per tent. So pretty good deal. You can uh, call them at 273-2294. You can book your cabin, cabins online at lolohotsprings.com. Also, um, it's not only a, a Grizz football weekend, but it's also a Grizz sports weekend starting uh, tonight, the early evening around 5.30 p.m. South Campus Stadium. You can, can come support the Grizz soccer team as they take on Vermont. Top Hat Family Friday uh, is happening from 6 to 9 p.m. at the Top Hat Lounge. It's a good way for uh, you to tie one over after a long day, and you get to hang out with your kids, too. Uh, Dinosaur Jr. is going to be playing at the Wilma. It's a self-titled debut of Dinosaur uh, was released in 1985. The band was originally just named Dinosaurs, but was forced to change the name due to legal reasons, thus adding Jr. in 1987. So anyways, uh, the former uh, was listed at 40 on Pitchfork's Media's top 100 albums of the 1980s, both albums earned. So there's going to be a band apparently playing um, at the Wilma starting at 8 p.m. And it's uh, all sorts of different music. They're, uh, let's see, the three albums have uh, many uh, um, influential works of indie alternative rock scene in the late 80s and early 90s. So this is probably grunge before grunge was cool. Um, so you can check that out. That's happening tonight at the Wilma. Um, other events that are happening in, in your late night events, if you guys are planning on going out and about, is you got Band in Motion, which is going to be at Union Club, which is the perfect place to get in motion on the dance floor. Double Down at the Sunrise Saloon is going to be some country. It's going to be rockabilly. Rockabilly is that that's the uh, kind of music that they're going to be playing along with the country. Let's see. What else is happening? They also are going to be having Dead Winter Carpenters, which is going to be bluegrass music at the Top Hat Lounge. So some of the things that are happening. So if you guys are planning on sticking around and sending your kids home after their, their Family Friendly Friday, you guys have Dead Winter Carpenters, which will be playing bluegrass that night. So those are some of your Friday events. Um, I'm going to throw it to a art clip. This is the last time I'm going to play this art clip, and this is at the Clay Studio, so they'll be tearing down this art installation from the Clay Studio today. So you have until the end of today to check out the Clay Studio's art installation with this.
And no, your ears are not deceiving you. That was sirens in the background of the music being played for the art clip. So just letting you guys know. All right. So thanks to our very own Rick Phillips for producing that. He uh, goes out into the community and gets little snippets of art of some of the stuff that uh, happens in Missoula because you never know if you'll ever see any of these art arts ever again. So thank you, Rick. Uh, moving on, let's talk about some more events that are happening for Saturday. Farmer's Market is still growing strong. They'll be going well into October. Farmer's Market from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. every single Saturday. You got Farmer's Market by the Red X's. You got the People's Market by Pine Street out just in front of Thomas Mar Bar and even uh, the Jimmy John's parking lot. Um, you also have um, the Clark Fork River Market, which is next to the river right underneath the Higgins Bridge. So that happens from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Law enforcement, tip a cop to benefit Special Olympics. Red Robin is hosting a law enforcement's torch run annual fundraiser to benefit Special Olympics in in Montana are back. You can join them for a lunch or dinner at Red Robin where Missoula law enforcement officers will serve as guests, servers for the day. Your tips to those law enforcement will benefit local Special Olympic teams and athletes. So it looks like uh, a lot of people at Red Robin are getting the day off while the police in Missoula um, will be serving you. Um, like they serve and protect, but I think they're going to leave the protect at home and they'll just serve you at Red Robin. I think that's going to be pretty funny and pretty cool. So Big Sky Branch academic hours begin at the Missoula Public Library, um, hosted by the Missoula Public Library at uh, Big Sky High School. Um, this is uh, academic activity type stuff that happens from Monday through Wednesday from 3.30 to 7.30, Thursdays from 2.30 to 6.30 because of early out. But this is a good way for uh, academic hours and they have a thing that starts at noon on Saturday as well at Big Sky High School's library. Predator feeding, Missoula Sectarium, um, 1 and 2.30 p.m. They'll be doing a feeding a cricket to uh, two of the predators. Um, you can see uh, how they explain how they demonstrate how they consume their prey, whether it is they weave them up or they just straight up eat them. Because uh, a lot of spiders, um, they usually have a tarantula that, that eats the animals as well. But a lot of times, uh, some animals don't use their web to uh, capture prey. They hunt prey as well. Oktoberfest, Baron Brewery Company will be celebrating Oktoberfest right here at the brewery, Baron Brewery. And they can join them for beer garden, food catering, and all sorts of things. They have a band that's going to be playing. It's going to be the S-Bomb Band. So get your later hosing on and... Um, Dindrills ready. I don't know what that word means. Um, Grizz football is happening tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Starting at 7 p.m., um, Grizz takes on a higher tier team, uh, Northern Iowa, in the only evening game of the season. Starts at 7 p.m. tomorrow night. And if you can't get tickets, they'll have a bunch of, I'm sure you'll be able to watch it on TV at any of the sports bars, which include. Uh, every sports bar ever in Missoula. <laughs> so those are some of your events that are happening for Saturday. Um, I will mention a couple of late night events. They have DJ music at the Badlander. They got um, um, folk music at the Top Hat. They got um, Money Penny, which is going to be at the Union Club. So they have a lot of bands playing tonight as well. Downtown Nuts Collective is doing Latin Dance Night. So if you're interested in learning about Latin Dance and Salsa, it's a good way to do that as well. Um, there's a couple other things happening on Sunday. They have uh, Grizz Soccer happening uh, Sunday afternoon at 1 p.m. at Grizz uh, South uh, Campus Stadium, which is off of South Street. You can't miss it. Um, Roxy will be playing uh, Princess Mononoke, part of their Miyazaki uh, f um, film. And I think it's the last Miyazaki um, films because it's Miyazaki month uh, in August. So um, it bleeds over a little bit into September, but that's pretty much it for that. All right. So um, let's see. I have another art clip I want to show you guys. It is uh, the one that lasts until the mid-September and it's at the Missoula Art Museum. It's Suka Warab uh, Zummerhoff's um, table at the Missoula Art Museum for her, this art installation. So when I come back, I'm going to I'm going to show you guys a tutorial on how to use GarageBand. So stay with me. I still got a lot of show to show you.
Well, it's a new school year, and you got some learning to do. So today, I'm going to teach you guys uh, a, a couple things. Um, I, you know, like I think it's a new school year, and I think it's a good way just to kind of, um, kind of get a, a, a course or maybe even a refresher for some of you guys at home. And this is what I like to call a new segment. I like to bring to the table. It's called Tutorial with Scott. And I don't have an intro for this, so we're just going to get right into it. All right. So, anyways. Let me show you a little thing called GarageBand. So GarageBand is used to make music tracks online. I mean, you can uh, plug in your guitar, you can plug in instruments, and you can make it yourself. I'm going to bring in my face right here and right now. Hey, guys. So as you can see up here, I'm going to click on the green software instrument, and, and I'm going to hit Create. Okay, then you got classic piano. A lot of times, this guy right here is your magic typing piano, and it gives you kind of a, a list so you can see the keys right here. It basically matches the keys right here. So f from A, S, D, all the way until the apostrophe. Um, if you don't have this up here, you can always go to Window. So you can do Show Keyboard. And it shows the whole entire keyboard. That's if you have an electronic keyboard for you guys at home. But of course, I'm going to show Musical Typing. <laughs> It's under Window, and Window is a is pretty much a universal a way to actually get the way you want your uh, project to look, just like your window layouts. Just think about that in terms of any kind of program whatsoever. All right, so I'm just going to play a couple notes. So yeah, I'm just kind of playing, and you can see the representation of the notes that I play right here. All right, so basically. The way I like to do this is I like I call this my rule of thir of threes. So when when you have have a band, a three piece band is usually the minimum requirement to have a full band. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add tracks. So I'm going to have a new track. I'm going to devote this one to a drummer because first and foremost, the one thing that I learned the hard way is that I when I create a song is that it doesn't match up with the rhythm that is created inside here. And this is basically like drum machine where it's kind of done for you. You can have a whole list. I'm going to move this slightly down here. So this is the basic drummer right here. It looks like it's Benny Modern uh, Motion. Yeah, I like it. If I, and if I want to increase it or anything like that, I'm going to actually move my face a little bit too. I'm going to move it just to the right so I can kind of show you guys a little bit more as well. So if you see um, in this general region, I can increase the percussion. I can make it a higher level so it's a little more intense. Let's bring it up a little bit more for each of these instruments. So yeah, so you kind of see how it's uh, the, it increased with the rhythm and the beat of the sound and stuff like that. Okay, so I mean, of course, as you see this plane, you can actually see this part right here. It looks like the T right here on the keyboard is doing itself. So um, there's that. Okay, so anyways, I'm gonna find. I'm gonna add another track. I like the sound of. I'm just gonna say I'm gonna. I, I like the sound of that. So I'm gonna move my face once again to this side. So I want you guys to see this general area right here. So this general area right here determines my rock kit and drums and stuff like that. But for right now, I'm going to add a new track. And I'm just going to do another software instrument because I don't have an instrument that I plugged into the system. So I'm going to leave with the instruments that are built into the uh, computer. All right. So that always that goes with the, uh, with the drummer is the bass. You always want to have a bass, uh, like something low bass, um, a muted bass maybe. It'll load. Make sure you click on the bass itself for you to play. So, okay, so I found something I might like. It seems, it seems a little quiet. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this record button that's up here, and I'm going to let it play out. So it'll give me a countdown with courtesy of this, but if you don't want the countdown, you can turn this thing off. So it's the count in. It says one, two, three, four. So one, two, three, four. All right, so I, I'm going to trim it just at the right point. I'm, I'm trying to follow the rules of like, you know, 4-4 uh, four, four time. This is made in a way where it's eight eight bars, not eight bars, but eight, um, 
eight phrases in a way. So I'm going to expand that just a little bit. Maybe put it, uh, I'm going to maybe just make three repeats. And what you do with your mouse is that if you go up to the mouse up here, of course, you might not be able to see it if you have a small screen like me, but up here, if you bring your cursor just above here, it shows you that repeat. But if you bring it kind of like towards the middle, it'll expand it to a certain degree. Um, but I'm going to, so like you, the top is to repeat it. And the bottom part is to shorten it. If you can make it shorter, you kind of see how there's grayed out notes right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep it just like this. And then I'm going to repeat it all the way pretty much to the end. And then just call it good right there. So the next, the fun part is I like to call it is the solo instrument, where I like to uh, put an instrument on there. So let's take a listen. So you're listening to the music. Yeah, a very simplistic kind of look. You can be like... And I'm, also, I'm just playing a JKL. So if you see the notes, I'm just playing J, K, L, L, J, K, L, L, apostrophe, semicolon. <laughs> <laughs> it's it, it's it's a fun way to do it. It's 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 very engaging, but basically that's kind of uh what it's all about. Um you just got to keep you got to do it. You got to learn how to do it and MCAT here we also do teaching programs to help people even if you are starting out, we'll help you uh get to where you need to be, but it's basically following my uh the rules uh be um you, uh, my first rule is when you're doing garage band, you have to have a rhythm. First and foremost is the rhythm is important because nothing doesn't make much sense if you can't follow the rhythm. So if you're playing something really, really cool and something really nice that you really like playing, but then you start adding the drummers, it's like, unless you have a drummer that'll follow along with your bad playing, which is usually what happens when you're in a band, that's, um, then you're kind of in a pickle. I mean, all the good music that you played doesn't match line up with the rhythm section, so you gotta, uh, basically kind of change it all and re-edit and do kind of something that's even beyond what GarageBand is capable of doing. But GarageBand is a very simplistic program. Anybody can pick it up. Um, it's a free app that you can download from the App Store um, courtesy of Apple products. So it's a good way. It's a fun way. So I'm going to end the show, and I want to thank you guys for joining me this morning. I'm Scott Ranf, and here's some um, wonderful music for you guys. So... <laughs> Thank you.